In this lesson, we are going to configure our Spring Boot Web MVC application to support GSP, Java Server Pages, and also GSTL, GSP Standard Tag Library. In previous lesson, we've created a basic Spring MVC web application, and I have opened it in my IntelliJ development environment. So to configure my application to support GSP, I'll need to open its pom.xml file, and I will need to add one more dependency to it. To make my application support Spring Web MVC framework, we've added Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency. Now, even though this dependency does contain the embedded Apache Tomcat Servlet container, this dependency alone is not enough to render GSP pages. There is one more dependency that we will need to add here. And to find this dependency, I will bring up a new browser window and I will open mavenrepository.com and we'll search for this dependency. The dependency that I'm looking for is called Tomcat Embed Jasper. And the very first item in the search result, Tomcat Embed Jasper, is what I need. So I will click on it and we'll copy its XML code snippet and we'll take it to my POM XML. Now I will remove its version because it can be managed by a current Spring Boot version. And I will provide dependency scope to indicate that this dependency should be provided at runtime by Java SDK or container. So I will provide a scope and the value here will be provided like this. Now, optionally, if your application needs to also support GSTL, GSP standard attack library, you can add the GSTL dependency here as well. I will search for GSTL dependency in Maven repository as well. The dependency version that I will use will be Javax Servlet GSTL. I will click it, I will copy its XML code snippet and will take it to my POM XML. I will also delete its version and I will use provided scope like this. Now I will click on this button here, Maven, to load Maven changes, or I can do right mouse click on POMXML and then choose Maven and then choose reload project. This will make Maven to fetch dependencies and add them to my project. All right, so now that I have added the needed dependencies, I'll create a very simple GSP page. And GSP pages, in Spring MVC web applications are usually placed into a web folder that goes into source main. Inside of the main folder, I will create a new directory and I will call it web app, like this. And inside of this web app folder, I can place GSPs already, but I will place it into a folder that is called web inf. And inside of web inf, I'll create a new directory that will be called GSP. And inside of GSP folder, I will create a new GSP file that I will call home GSP. Although you can give it any other name. Now to save time, I will simply copy and paste a ready to use GSP page. This is a very simple HTML page that does not have any GSP tags except of this first line. And I will make the GSP print something. This is my GSP page, something like this. All right, so the next step is to provide a couple of configurations in the application properties file. So let's open it. In the resources folder, I will select application properties file and I will open it. Now for Spring Framework to be able to use the GSP page that we have created as a view, we will need to configure its prefix and postfix. And we can configure prefix with the following property. Spring MVC view prefix equals, and then a path to a GSP folder starting from forward slash web inf, forward slash GSP, and then again, forward slash. And view suffix can be configured with the following property. Spring MVC view suffix 
equals and then the value is dot gsp and this is it our application is now configured to support gsp we can now create a very simple controller class and see if it works i will save application properties file and i will go to main package and inside of the main package of my application i will create a new java class and i will call it home controller Now, because this lesson is not about how to create controller classes, I'll paste a ready-to-use code. And in the following lessons, I'll explain how to create controller classes and how to handle HTTP requests in details from the very beginning. All right, so I will replace this class with a very simple controller code snippet and I will import controller annotation and I will import the get mapping annotation. So this method that is called homepage will be triggered when we access the root resource of our website. And this is because of the forward slash used in the get mapping. And when our method completes, it will return the name of the view that needs to be displayed to user. The name of the view is home. And this is because our GSP page is also called home. So when Sprint Framework adds prefix web inf forward slash gsp and it adds suffix which is dot gsp, it will be able to locate the home gsp page because my method returns the name of the view which is home. All right, so we are ready to run this application and see if it works. And another way to run Spring Boot applications is to bring in terminal window make sure that you are in the home directory of your project and if you list files in this directory you should be able to see pom xml file so to run spring boot application you can use maven space and then spring dash boot colon run this will build your project and will run it on default port number 8080 all right so tomcat started on port number 8080 and I can now bring a new browser window and I will open localhost port number 8080 and hit enter. And here's my GSP page. So it worked very well. So now let's continue and let's learn how to configure our project to support another very popular Java server-side template engine that is called Timeleaf.